Hello guys, welcome back to another tutorial. Hit the bell icon button so that you don't miss out any tutorial. Hey everyone, welcome back. We're ready to start coding. I like to start on a fresh, on my desktop, on a fresh desktop and begin with a new um, folder. So I'm going to right click on my desktop and hit new and then go over to folder and then we're going to title it whatever we would like. So since we're just doing some practice, I'm going to title this one Coding Practice. You may title it anything, anything that you'd like. Okay, so now that I have my folder, I'm going to open up Visual Studio Code. Um, and you'll see a welcome page. And you can either go to Open Folder right here under the start menu or you can go to your file and do the same thing where you would stay you would um, see where it says new folder not file open folder you would hit open folder and it's going to look in my look on my desktop and I'm just gonna pick uh, so I'm gonna go to my desktop and I'm gonna pick the folder that I just created which was coding practice and then I'm just gonna select that folder so it's gonna open that folder for us and that's where our code is gonna live okay so here is that folder that we just created and the welcome page I'm going to go ahead and just delete it for now, um, just close it out for now. Okay, so now I have my coding practice folder. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create an HTML file. So we're going to hit on, click on the icon new file. And most often we will title our initial HTML file index.html. So index.html and hit enter and it'll open up automatically for us okay so here's our index HTML file and it's empty and what we're gonna do is we're gonna use the feature on VS Code where we just type in HTML and we get our little choice uh, menu choice and we're gonna hit um, the one with a five and now we have our boilerplate so we'll change the title and I'm going to say um, coding practice and of course you can say whatever you want okay and what I'd like to do next is I'm just gonna minimize um, go ahead and minimize this for a second so I can go back to my desktop now I'm gonna go back to my um, folder coding practice and now you can see inside that I have a um, index HTML file inside there so if I open it up so we can um, see it and so there's my index HTML file even though there's nothing in it yet so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to right click on it um, and I'm actually gonna do it again I'm gonna click on it first now now that it's selected I'm going to right click on it and I'm gonna say open with it should give me some choices here I can open up with Firefox Google uh, Microsoft Edge so I'm gonna open it up with Google doesn't really matter and that page is gonna open up but there's nothing in it yet because we haven't put anything in it yet so it's just gonna be in our local environment this is on our um, on our own machine it's like our local server so this is how you can see everything that you're going to write so what I'm going to do is just minimize it a little bit just make it smaller and then I'm going to um, close out this and now I'm going to go back to my VS Code and I'm going to go ahead and minimize this a little bit just make it a little smaller so that I can see both screens so I want to be able to see my um, code and I want to be able to see the browser as well and then we're going to start start coding inside the body and then we'll be able to refresh the browser and then see um, see the output 
Okay, so I'm in the body, so let's start with some basic HTML tags. So we're going to start with our, our, our header tags. Um, let's go ahead and start with all of our H1s. Um, so what you'll do is you'll start with a um, less than, like that, and you'll say H1, and then you'll close it, and then automatically via, uh, VS Code is going to give you your closing tag. So you have your H1 here, and then your closing H1, and then inside, the cursor's already inside it, so if you just hit enter, then you can see that you can put something inside the, the, um, the tag. Now another way to do it in VS Code is just type H1 and hit enter and you get it. So you don't have to type all the little greater thans and less thans. So, um, and you don't have to hit enter and um, separate them if you don't want to, especially for the H1s and H2s and stuff, you're not going to be putting a lot of text inside there, so I usually just leave it the way it is. So let's say, uh, let's say my web page, and we can put anything we want in here. And then what I'd like you to do is um, save it. So you can either go up to File and Save, or it would be a lot easier just to um, hit Control S. So I'm hitting Control S, and now I'm going to go over here to my browser and refresh or reload the page. And now we see the output, my web page. All right, this is exciting. Okay, so let's keep going. Now I'm going to type H2 and hit Enter. And I'm going to just write some text. This is an H2. And I'm going to hit Control S to save it. And then I'm going to refresh. And then you can see that this text is smaller than the, the, the H1 text. Now, each browser has their own default styling. So Chrome is going to show this up, show this in a certain way. Whereas if I had chosen um, Microsoft Edge, it might look different. It will probably look different. And then Firefox would look different. And every single type of browser is going to have their own default styling. Uh, we're going to be um, overriding all of that when we do um, our own CSS and um, overriding some of it, if not all of it. So just wanted you to be aware of that. Okay, so let's go ahead and do all of the different um, head heading tags just to see the differences. So H3. And I'm going to write here's an H3. And then I'm not going to save it yet because I just want to do it first. And then I will save it at the end. Um, let's do an H4. And we'll say hello. <clears throat> and then we'll do an H5. And we can say, um, Let's say, ha, hello world, something different. And then we'll do an H6, and that is it. That's, that's Those are all of the different H's. Okay. This is it. Okay. Now that I've done it, I'm just going to control S and refresh. So you can see that they all get smaller and smaller as you get to the higher numbers. Okay, so you can choose different headers um, for this larger te larger text. All right, so let's next do some other elements. So a very common element is a div, a div element. A div element is a container. It's com it's a common element that we use, and it just contains it can contain other elements. So let's go ahead and and put it in. So div and hit enter. And then I'm going to hit enter again. And now I can kind of see my container. So inside of my div, I'm going to go ahead and put a couple of other elements in there. So let's do an h2. And I'm going to say, what are divs? And then I'm going to do next an h5, just for fun. 
and inside there I'm going to say divs are used. So I'm basically just going to be writing some text, but at least this text is helpful for you. So when you keep this code, you can refer back to it and, you know, to see what the definitions of different things are. So divs are used as containers. It seems like it's better than just making nonsensical paragraphs of stuff. So divs are used as containers for other HTML elements and help us divide our page into sections. Okay, so I'm going to hit uh, Control S and refresh. And then I can see that I have my div. All right, so um, there are a lot of other elements that are similar to divs in, in that they create containers and create sections for our page and we have we have some of them are called sec there's one called section there's one called article one called a side um, divs are real common um, but it's it's kind of nice to have the other ones just in case you want to you know it's just helpful for you as the as the developer to see your code and divide your code into different things that are more useful for you Okay, now why don't we do another, um, why don't we do another one, let's do a section, a section tag. Section, and then inside our section, let's go ahead and practice doing some other elements. So I'm going to do um, a paragraph element, so P, and so this is going to be normal text, so I'm going to say this is a paragraph with normal sized text. Okay, and let's do some other ones. How about we try italic? I, and um, I hit enter, and I'm going to write, this is italic. Okay, and then I'm going to do another one called emphasis. EM is emphasis, and I'm going to say this is emphasized text. Okay, and you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to go over here to my file um, icon and I'm going to click it and that's going to get rid of all the um, folders and that way I can see more of my code and it's just a little easier for us to, to, to manage. Next I'm going to do strong. Strong is another element and that is going to be bold text. So this text, this element uses a bolder or stronger text. Okay. And then finally, what else should we use? Let's do, no, let's do bold. Let's do actual bold. B, there's one for bold and see if that's different. This is bold text. Okay, so why don't we save and refresh and see what we can come up with here. All right, so we can see that we have our paragraph text, we have our italic, our emphasized, which look exactly the same to me, and then we have the strong and the bold, and again, they look exactly the same as well. So there are different choices, but it seems like they're very similar um, you might notice that if you look down the page, everything is, you know, um, uh, everything is right next to each other, like underneath each other. Everything just goes to the next line, next line, next line, next line, until we get here. Your italic and your emphasized are right next to each other, and your, your strong and your bold is right next to each other. Um, if I, if I expand this, this, the, again, these stay right next to each other. This is, by default, these elements are called inline elements by default. So they're going to stay in line, whereas all the other ones are called block elements, which means they're going to go to the next line, next line, next line. So um, as you learn which ones are in line and which ones are block, it'll help you to decide what to do for your design as you're starting to design, design things. So quickly, if you were if you were sitting here going, okay, yeah, I want to do some italics and stuff, but I don't I want it to go to the next line. There's a couple different ways you could do it. One is to use CSS, but an easier way is to simply put a, a break 
in in the in the ones that are in line. So for italic, I would go, I would just type br and hit enter, and it would it, the co the text editor would give me my closing and my opening and closing uh, tags or um, brackets, and a break is is a single um, element. It doesn't have an opening and a closing. It's just all by itself. And then if I do another break after my M, BR and hit enter, and then I do another one after my strong, BR and hit enter, and then I do a final one after my bold, BR and enter. So I've got these breaks. If I save it, it should and it will put these things um, on the next line. So let's see if I refresh and then you can see that everything goes into the next line. All right, this is a good spot to stop and um, take a break. When we come back, we are going to work on some more advanced um, HTML elements. See you in the next video. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. If you like the video, do give us a thumbs up and share it. Also check out amazing discounts and offers on our premium courses in the description below.